Welcome back to another week of Instigating with Clarky and Drury, brought to you by Larry Hudson Chevrolet Buick GMC. Ryan Drury here with Clarky, and we're pleased to be joined by a friend of the show, our buddy, freelance host. He's been doing stuff with Homestand. He's doing a bunch of new, exciting content. Big soccer guy, which we're excited. I know Clarky's very excited. To <laughs> I talk am. Footy yeah. With Albert I can't Martanian. Wait. Talk, dro- drones. talk drones. Yes, oh, talk drones. Yes. Albert. Drones. How are you, brother? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me on, guys. It's good to see you. Dude, it's great to have you back on. You're up to a bunch of new stuff. Uh, Tell us a little bit about what you're up to right now because you got some new soccer content rocking. You're up to a bunch of stuff. What are you doing? Yeah, I just launched the YouTube channel, which is is fully Premier League focused. So if you want to check that out, just pop the name into YouTube. So I'm doing tons of Premier League stuff. That's like, you know, I come on here, we talk Leafs, we talk NFL, but really deep down, true passion is is soccer, especially the Premier League. Anything to do with English football, I'm all in. So I'm doing a lot of content surrounding that now. Um, you'll see me pop up with you know multiple different sports books doing content for them. So um, I'm not sure where I'll be every other month, but I'll be somewhere. Yeah, you're a busy guy. Well, and, and when it comes to footy, we love footy. We know this, and we we cheer for rival clubs. Clarky's a big footy guy too. He loves I am. his. I am. He loves his <laughs> soccer, and I know he has something a burning question he wants to ask you about what went down at the Olympics. Oh boy, I do. Yeah, like what's going on with the drone? Like what? So here's the deal, and this is how I relate things, uh, Albert. I worked for Leafs TV for 14 years. We used to do a practice show every day. We showed the world. Whoever wanted to watch the practice, what's the big deal? Like, is it really that top secret um, that they had to spy on the practice? Like, is it is there really a lot that goes down in a soccer practice that clubs want to know about? The big deal is the Olympics. Yeah, if it was club competition or anything else, it wouldn't even. I mean, there would be a discussion around it because they're using drones to to film other teams' training <laughs> sessions. But, I mean, you've heard, you know, from other players in world football say, whatever, it happens all the time, which it does. I mean, in the past, in the early 90s, you heard about assistants going to, like, a Liverpool training ground and peeking over the fence or over the bushes to see what's going on. But, I mean, now you can you have access to every single game in the world if you really want to watch it. Mm-hmm. So you're getting all of your information from those games. So there's there's not much that you're going to learn from those training sessions, maybe um, yeah. certain patterns of play and how they're going to you know, uh, manage certain set pieces and, and potentially who's going to be in the starting 11. But that shouldn't give you that much of an advantage. Mm-hmm. Like I said, though, if it was club football in the MLS or the Premier League or somewhere else, it probably wouldn't be a big issue. It's because mm-hmm. it was the Olympics. Um, there was heightened security because of terrorist threats. So when mm-hmm. they see an unknown drone in the air, over you know New Zealand's training session, they're going to be like, well, <laughs> this is this is an issue right now, and that's why that's why it blew up. And okay. you know the Olympics, they hold themselves in high regard, no cheating. You know what I mean? So sure, they had to, they sure had to they use, do. They had to use yes. yeah, exactly. They had to use Canada as an example, and that's exactly what they did. But with that said, I mean, how stupid is that from Canada? Very. You, know, you know they used it against New Zealand, which was one of the teams, and. Even without the drone, Canada was expected to beat that team regardless. Mm-hmm. You know, did you really need to do that? So I, I just right. don't understand what what advantage they were really taking from that. But as we saw, the story uncovered that it's been happening for a few years now. And uh, that's honestly kind of sad, even though it does happen. Uh, so that's that, drone, right. I- that, that drone must have been like I have a drone. I have the DJ, DJI Mini 4 Pro. It's a great little drone. I don't Let's use get it to, to spy. spy. I don't use it to spy on people, but if I can make some side cash, maybe I will. But those things go pretty high. Like there had to be people watching specifically for a drone in the air, I guess. And as you said, because of the Olympics and the Titan yeah. security and terrorist attacks and everything, everyone was watching. But I mean, yeah, like... I don't know what you can see from way up there because I've had mine pretty high in the sky and you can't really pick a lot up either. Right. I mean, I guess you get the aerial view of of how they're setting up. Maybe I have no idea. It's just, you know, Canada has passed this point 
where I think they need to find unfair advantages. You know, we saw it during yeah. uh, World Cup qualifying where they played Mexico and Edmonton, the Ice Teca. Remember, it was like the conditions were ridiculous. They could have played it anywhere else, but they decided they decided to play there to yes. give themselves somewhat of an advantage. Yeah. And I just feel yeah. like Canada's past that, and hopefully they're past you know these these types of scandals. But who knows what else is going to be uncovered and moving forward. Oh, well. Yeah. It, made I mean, me, it got me talking about soccer, so it couldn't have been yeah. better. <laughs> exactly, Clarky. There you go. We'll make a fan of you yet. Uh, Albert, no. on that note, like you said, like, look, we're big footy guys, all jokes aside. Like, we've seen way worse things. I mean, the, the Calciopoli scandal comes to mind, of course, with Juve. I mean, one of the many scandals they've been involved in. The AC Milan scandal with their president back in the early 90s. Like, look, we, we've seen some wild stuff with match fixing and everything, and that wasn't what this was. But you did make note of the fact that the investigation, which is still ongoing between FIFA at this point and Canada soccer is looking back into allegations that this has been going on for a while, mm. including during the tenure of John Herdman, who of course managed the women's team. He managed the men's team and is now the manager at TFC. If it gets discovered that he was essentially, which rumor has it, was the architect behind putting this program in place. Do you think that any penalties that come against him in terms of what FIFA can do would potentially threaten his position as the manager of TFC ultimately? Yeah, I mean, I don't have the answer for that, but probably, right? Because Should it? Should it, I guess, is, a, is the better question, Albert. Do you think it should? Right. I mean, listen, if they have hardcore evidence that it was him and he was the ringleader and he's the one who was orchestrating this whole thing, then he's probably going to have to pay the price for it. What that price is, I'm not sure. Like I said, it was um, it was it was made really aware of and Canada paid a heavy penalty because it was the Olympics. Now that the Olympics are gone, is the penalty going to be the same? I I'm not sure. But if he orchestrated all that um, and he was the one planning everything, then absolutely. I, I don't see why his his job wouldn't be in jeopardy as a manager and now the manager of TFC. Tell us a little bit about, you know, the overall outlook on Canadian soccer though, in a positive sense, because okay. outside of this, outside of this whole scandal, and I thought the women did very well in terms of trying to bounce back from oh, this. Yeah. And I mean, they, they were playing under really tough circumstances, whether you agree with the six point deduction or, or not, maybe it was a little harsh given some of the scandals I brought up earlier. Um, they, they, they played admirably and, and really, really well under tough circumstances and the men's team. I mean, we saw what they did in Congress. Calf. I mean, Canadian soccer is trending upward. What do they need to do to continue to maintain that trajectory over the next couple of years leading into a huge co-hosting of the World Cup? Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely more of the same. I feel like they have the right manager in the job at the moment that plays um, a very attractive style of football. He understands the region being American. He played for the States. Um, he, he's managed in the MLS. He's managed in Europe. So he has tons of experience. And I think it should just be more of the same. L let's be real. They finished in you know the top four of Copa America where many weren't really expecting them to even get out of their group. And they did. They finished second. They, you know, they had two matches against Argentina. And you can argue that they could have stolen a point in the group stage match and they played really well in the, in the knockout match as well. So I liked the, the, the direction that they're going. They need to play more matches, more um, competitive matches with tier one teams. I mean, now in this international window, they have three matches, one coming up on Saturday against the States, which is important, Mexico and Panama. But you want to see more of those matches against Uruguay and Argentina and France and, and Holland. Those need to continue and they need to continue make it in, making it into these top competitions and going deep. It's not now Canada has reached a point where it's not just about making the tournament. It's about making a deep run, getting out of the group stage and, and having something to say about yourself as a nation because there's really good footballers here. If you look at their roster, you're having a lot of players now who are making moves to big European clubs. You know, Derek Cornelius after Copa goes to Marseille, one of the biggest clubs in France. Moise Bombido, who I don't even think has 60 professional matches under his belt, now plays for Nice in France. You have Stefan Estacchio at Porto. You have Laren at, at Lille. Like, the list goes on and on and on. So they're making progress. They're getting better. But when it comes to international matches, they need to be playing these top-tier one teams. 
And when they get into competitions, they got to make deep runs. No longer is it about just getting in. Absolutely. It's not good enough to just show up anymore. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's without even mentioning that Alfonso Davies is arguably potentially the best player at his given position on any given day. I mean, that guy's an incredible athlete and talent. We're lucky to have him. I I do wonder, you, you bring up the States, obviously Canada with a big match coming up in this international window. How about the United States, man? They've uh, they got a shiny new manager. They haven't made it official yet, have they? No. That Maurizio Pochettino is coming, but but by all rumors, the the ink is about to dry. I mean, if it is true that Pochettino's going there, what does that do for an American squad that has really found themselves tripping all over their shoelaces the last couple of years? Yeah, I'm surprised that it hasn't been done yet. I just I feel like I keep reading reports that a deal is imminent. A deal is, is imminent, but it hasn't happened yet. I actually started thinking about what's going on in the Premier League, about you know how Manchester United have come out of the gate struggling if they would go back in on Pochettino and maybe steal him from, from the USA. So that can still happen. But if he does get the job, I think it's an incredible appointment. Um, he doesn't have any experience at the international level as a manager, so that concerns me a little bit, but he has managed at the top level. You know, he managed Southampton, then Spurs, and then all the way at the top with PSG, where he had some you know pretty big names and some serious talent he had to work with in, in Neymar. And I believe Messi was there as well when, when he had his last season at PSG. But what he's really good at is developing young players. And that was a big thing when he was at Tottenham. Um, he had Danny Rose and Kyle Walker and Harry Kane very early on. And he said, if you listen to me and you play in my system and do as I tell you, I will make you an international footballer. And he did. At one point, Danny Rose and Kyle Walker were the two best fullbacks in England's system. Harry Kane has now gone on to be one of the best strikers in the world. You know, one of the best English strikers in a very, very long time. So I think if they do get him, if he, do si- if he does sign on, it bodes well for, for their youth and then moving forward because he just has that track, rec- track record of uh, improving young players. Hey, you mentioned this a little uh, just a minute ago about Manchester United, my team in the Premier League, and Ten Hag seems to be, he's really on the bubble here, um, getting in arguments with media. Do you think he's going to survive? Yeah, I think so. I mean, ownership ownership has has been pretty vocal about backing him, and they they spent a lot of money. They gave him money to spend in the transfer window. Uh, So I I don't see it happening, but if you look at some of their upcoming fixtures – their next game after the break, I believe, is against Southampton, and it would be shocking if they lost to Southampton. So I think they pick up three points there. But then it gets tricky because not only do you have Premier League fixtures coming up, but you're sprinkling in the Europa League and League Cups. And mm. you know, based on the way that they played against Liverpool, actually based on their first three games of the season, I can't tell you they had one good performance. You know, I know they beat Fulham in the first game, the opening game of the season, but they were really poor. They were lucky to, to come away with all three points. Um, and then against Liverpool, I mean, that was just capitulation. It was a complete embarrassment, right? And that really showed Ten Hag's system and how flawed it is. Arna Slant, Liverpool just exposed it. They allowed Casemiro to get on the ball. Manchester United's fullbacks go up the pitch. He has no one to pass to. Liverpool throw four or five players on him. Turnover, scores. And that's exactly how they scored every single goal. And three games into the season, it's same old, same old for Ten Hag and Manchester United. But with that said, because ownership is being vocal about backing him, I don't think he's going anywhere. Yeah, and outside of Pochettino, I don't know who they replace him with right now, obviously, um, uh, unless they That's were to, the problem, you know, right? That's the problem. Yeah, who are you going to replace him with? Clarky, I got to say, your most impressive question <laughs> in the history of this show. I'm extremely, <laughs> I'm extremely Thanks. impressed. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. I love it. That Thanks. Question. I've, been, I've been doing my homework. I do. I do. I'm very impressed. Yeah, a plus yeah. to you on the homework. Thanks, thanks, I want to. I want to ask leaps, you. Too? Absolutely. I got okay. one more. I got to ask. Look, we're yeah, Albert yeah, and I are big. Okay, one more. One guys. more. That's fine. Albert, That's good. Yeah. Albert and I worked together very briefly at Fight Network back in the day, and we, oh, we yeah. established that we're both big Premier League guys. Okay, so I'd be remiss if I didn't ask him this. It is this season, in your opinion, just as simple as, well, it's Man City's to lose and it would be a shock if anybody else won? Or do you feel that a Liverpool or an Arsenal, I'm not even going to say our teams because there's no shot they're winning, uh, Chelsea and Tottenham, by the way, do you think that Arsenal or Liverpool could realistically push Guardiola's squad this year? 
My preseason prediction was surprisingly Arsenal to win the Premier League. And after watching Man City, after watching their opening three games, I'm regretting saying that because they look uh, they look better than ever, and they're not even at full tilt yet. Erling Haaland no has seven, seven goals in three games, two hat tricks, and he hasn't broken a sweat. Phil Foden has barely played. He was, I believe, was young player of the year last year, or PFA player of the year last year. Uh, Kyle Walker has barely played. Rodri hasn't played a second yet. He's probably going to win the Blonde Door. So as yeah. the best player in the world, and they're unstoppable. So that scares me a little bit. And if you if you go back to last season, the last time Man City lost a game was in December. One 0 lost to Villa. That's twenty six matches unbeaten. And I know Arsenal has has a record somewhat close to that, but twenty six in a row unbeaten. The way that they're playing, that's only reserved for the best teams in the world. In, in my opinion, they are the best team. With that said, preseason prediction was Arsenal. I think they can push them. I like what Arsenal has done. Has done. Um, they haven't gotten weaker. If anything, they've strengthened their strengths. They had the best defensive record in the Premier League last season. So what do they do? They go out and get uh, Ricardo Cagliari from Bologna, who had a great Euro. So they've strengthened their back end. Um, they strengthen their midfield with Mikel Marino, even though he, he just got injured, but that's a, a great addition. And in attack, they, they get Raheem Sterling almost by accident, but that's, that's such a fantastic fit. I mean, the guy won four titles with Manchester City. He's averaging about nine to ten goals a season. When he was at Manchester City, Mikel Arteta was the assistant coach, so there's a recognition there, so he understands exactly how Arteta wants to play, and he can score goals. And there's been a lot of talk about how Arsenal needed number nine to, to win the title. But if you look back at last season, they only scored five goals less than Manchester City, and that's without a true striker. They score by committee. So I think all the pieces are there. They just can't throw away certain games like they did against Brighton. You can't be dropping points at home to Brighton. So if, if those types of results continue, they have no chance. But I think they'll be better, and they'll, they're going to push City to the brink. It'll be tough, but they will. Yeah, the talent's there, and I mean, I, I I will say this: I think you and I are gonna have to collectively barf if Arsenal end up winning a title. I mean, oh, God, I've enjoyed plenty of success, but but you you in particular, your Tottenham boys, you're still waiting for a first Premier League title. I honestly, and this would be controversial amongst my Chelsea fan base, I would rather see Tottenham win than Arsenal. I really wow, I hate them. Awesome. I hate them that much. I really, really do. Now. Speaking of a franchise that people love to hate and people love to love, <laughs> let's talk about those Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm oh, not saying man. I do, Clarky, but you know, you know oh, yeah, how it yeah. goes. Yeah, you love to hate on them. He hates. No, them. I don't. You do, do so, not. Ryan. I don't hate them. You Why do. You say I'm not saying you hate them, but you love to hate on them. No, you love I it don't. when they I... don't when they fail. You do. I don't see Albert agrees fail. with me. It's I fun to me. talk about though. It's fun yeah, to talk about. Exactly. And I want you, I want you to give me your impression of the big news this off season. And that was Austin Matthews getting the C. We've talked a lot about it. Clarky gave us his thoughts on it. Overall, I think we're all on the same page. It's a move that makes sense. But what were your immediate reaction sex? You're a big Leaf fan. Yeah. You know what? I was actually surprised because you know, what's this, this management in this club, used to doing they're used to being reactive rather than proactive and this is a proactive move by them you know with Tavares you know his play is declining he's entering his last year I really felt like Austin Matthews took a leap uh, not only as a player on the ice but as a leader on this team last year I don't know if you guys noticed that but in his in his, in his post games and his pre games he's he's always calm cool collected he never gets too high he never gets too low and I think that's a, a great look for a captain so it was surprising in the sense that the Leafs did it. Like I mentioned, they're very reactive. Go back to the Nylander contract. You know, instead of getting ahead of that thing, what do they do? They wait for Nylander to get to the peak of his powers to take over the NHL for whatever it was, 25 games, and then give him everything but the sun. That's the Toronto Maple Leafs. So that's why it was, it was surprising, but definitely the right move. I think the main man has to see. And it's not only because he's their best player, one of the best players in the league. It's because... It's his team, and they go as he goes. So put the C on him. Clarky, I, I know that you're going to want to hear this too because we had Albert's compatriot, his good buddy, our friend, Justin Pooney, on the show a couple <laughs> weeks ago, and, and we were talking heavily about this. 
And we asked him what he thought in terms of an over-under. I gave him an over-under on points for the Leafs this year. I set it at 102 and a half. And he took under. What do you think of this Leafs roster? And is another century mark in store for them with the roster as it stands? Um, I wouldn't... I wouldn't say that they won't get there. I'm, I don't know, but over under because it's they have a new coach coming in. How is he going to play? Um, are the goals going to dry up a bit? I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think that they will. But they still have holes to fill, right? I mean, look at that left side. Pretty weak. You know, Matthew Nyes and Bobby McMahon, really good players, but they really need to take a leap. So who would you be, fix it with? What would you do? I don't know. I, I just I don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're looking at Max Pacioretty. I I read that they're looking for him. Is, is that going to help this team? I'm not sure. If Matthew Nyes, which I don't think is more than a 20-goal scorer, he's, is he going to be your top line left winger? I don't know. Bobby McMahon, can he replicate what he did before he got injured? I don't know. Then you go, what, Pontus Holmberg and, and Connor Dewar? Or do you throw Max Domi on the wing? So I think they need to address goal scoring on the left-hand side. They probably need another center, maybe a second or a third-line center, unless they're going to use Max Domi there. Um, so there's still a lot of holes that need to be filled. I still think that, you know, a guy like Mitch Marner is probably going to still be in and around a hundred points. I think Matthews is probably going to get his 50. Nylander is probably gonna have another strong season. So they're going to be in and around that number, but it all comes down to April as it always does. So the regular season is a regular season. I'm going to pay attention to it because I want to see, how Barubi sets up his team and what he does when he doesn't like what's going on, how this tandem is going to work out, um, how this new defensive, well, somewhat new defensive core, how that's going to shake down. But other than that, I'm waiting until April to see if they can actually score goals in the playoffs. Yeah, that's the key. There's no doubt about that. Like, I mean, be nice to see their power play do something in the playoffs. Be over. Well, yeah, there's there's a lot of things to be. Yeah, do well. I mean, we can. Like, let's be honest about. You know, they got to fill these holes and they got to do these things and they need more secondary scoring. But if you look back at history, and we've been talking about this forever, the biggest issue in the playoffs is goal scoring. They're not getting blown out in games, even though the defense, like the defensive core has never been that great. It's 2-1 no. games. So it all comes it down to the core four, core three, whatever you want to call them. If they're not performing the playoffs, then whatever they do in the season does not matter. They can win the President's Trophy. Who cares? It means mm-hmm. nothing. You'll get past a round or two. 100%. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. We wish we could, as Leaf fans, just fast forward to April and get on with life. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, it's it's such a painful regular season. Uh, I don't see this team missing the playoffs. I don't see that happening. No. Uh, But they they also have to position themselves good when you do get in the playoffs. And, and, you know, that's a challenge. And if they only have 102 points, as Ryan put the over-under at, that's not going to probably even get your home ice. Yeah, it'll be an interesting watch this regular season because of what I mentioned. You know, you got the new coach. I mean, how yeah. is this tandem going to going to work out? Is Joseph Wall going to stay injury free? And if he doesn't, that's a massive concern because then you're you're going to lean on Anthony Stolarz to be your number one guy moving forward, mm-hmm. and then bring up the guy from the Marlies. So I'm not so sure. Mm-hmm. You have a guy like Tanev, who's a really good defenseman and should unlock Over. Morgan Riley, like we saw Luke Shen unlock Morgan Riley just a couple yeah. seasons ago. Yeah. Yeah. But can he stay healthy? He's willing to block shots with his face game one of the regular mm-hmm. season. Or and you have you have a little trade chip, um, which you could use throughout the season. A guy who hasn't signed yet, and we all know who that is, oh, Mr. Boy. Fancy Pants. Um, <laughs> where do you see all that lining up and playing out? Honestly, I've said this from the beginning. I don't think anything's going to change. I don't think he's going anywhere. I think it's more likely that he probably signs Three another signs. contract. Oh, my God. I, I mean, know. it doesn't make any sense. It makes zero sense. But do you trust Brendan Shanahan to do anything else other than, than re-sign him? Well, I, I'll tell you exactly what happens, and I told this to Clark. Okay. Okay, yeah. Here's what's going to happen. He's going to have 25 points in his first 11 or 12 games. And they're going to give him an eight-year deal at 12. That's what's going to happen. 
That's what's going to happen here. He's going to come out of the gates and he's going to, dude, he's going to have four points opening night, three on the power play. He's going to have a beautiful breakaway goal. He's going to keep that up and then he's going to get a massive deal and then he'll go on a cold streak for five or six games just or, like Neilander did. He'll pick it or, back up and then the playoffs they'll lose. Or he'll have an okay regular season and he'll play in the first round of the playoffs and score 20 points in six games. Like just be on fire. That. They'll go out in the first round. They'll lose, and he would be their best performer, and he'll be unsigned. Now, what do you do? Yeah, no, I Karki, I usually agree with you, but <laughs> yes. I highly doubt. I highly, I doubt, do too. I, I do highly too, doubt. I'll see the day that Mitch Marner does that for the Toronto Maple Leafs in the in the playoffs. I'm just it's saying, just as him. a Leaf fan, that's probably that's probably how it'll. Oh happen. yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's no, all totally. I'm saying. Listen, Mitch Marner. You know, I've ragged on him before, and everyone does. He's an incredible player, and he is a really important player to the Toronto Maple Leafs. He's the only guy who plays in every single situation, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we saw Matthews and Eagle uh-huh. on the penalty kill last year, but he kills penalties. He's going to hit ninety, probably ninety points, maybe a hundred points in the in the regular season. Yeah. He's going to do what he always does. It's just mm-hmm. it comes down to April, and when it comes to a new contract, I just I don't know how they can move forward. Mm-hmm. By re-signing him and having three guys making well over ten million, it's just in a cap world that makes no sense. This no, isn't Dry Settle and McDavid who went to mm-hmm. Game Seven of the Stanley Cup Final who deserve as much money as as they want. It's not that. This is completely different. Yep. It, mm-hmm. This is a group of failures over the past six, seven, eight seasons, where you can argue that a couple of sure. them, maybe maybe fifty percent of them, don't deserve their salary. See, even I even mean, Albert saying that, Ryan, you get a little smile, a little smirk. You know? it's, and it's <laughs> not because I don't want to see them succeed. It's uh-huh. not. Uh-huh. It's just I I laugh at the broken recordness of it all. Yeah, it's, it's just, just like, a lot about that. There's no doubt that that's what that's what's entertaining and for people that hate the Leafs they really love it. I'm laughing because it's just like it's the definition of insanity, and I'm like. God and and look the the good news and bad news is that it's all up to these guys. Like they could do better and win some rounds and actually mm-hmm. perform up to those lofty standards that those numbers on their paychecks say, mm-hmm. or they could keep doing what they do. Look and and Mitch Marner. I was arguing with a guy in my hockey pool the other day about him because he just got traded in our hockey pool. I won't tell you for what and. uh and they were saying, oh, the guy, he's brutal in the playoffs. It's not as bad as people. Th- in 57 playoff games, he's got 50 points. Mm-hmm. Now, would you prefer it be a point a game for a guy making that kind of cheddar and wanting 12 million? Yeah, you would. But it's those game six and sevens that that haunt this core four. Five career game sevens, two assists, minus five. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's that's the narrative that they have to kill. It's a big hill to climb. I understand it. I really do. But... I don't know. I don't think I they're going to sign him. I think he'll I walk. Do. I, think, I really think, I think they will resign walk. him. They're going to and, let and, him. And then there, I mean, that's that's a joke as well, right, Clarky? If if he walks for nothing, yes and no. I mean, they. I mean, he holds all the cards. Yeah, right? it's, a the no, it's a disaster. It's a disaster. Of course, it is. It's a disaster. Okay, but but gaining cap space in itself is a huge advantage. Yes, cap, yeah, I'll, I'll totally space, agree with that. It is an advantage, but cap space for what? For another D and another goalie, yeah. that you what you would trade them for, like, potentially what you would trade them for, yeah. But you know what, Clarky, you're gonna have to fill that that ninety point void, right? And you're gonna have to yeah. fill that number yeah. one PK role, yeah. and you're gonna have to fill that. Come on, on Easton Cowan. Role. Well, yeah, he's, I mean, yeah, you gotta he gotta bank on some of these young guys to, you to do. pan out. It's been a long time since uh, yeah. you know someone came through the ranks, yeah, right, yeah, it's been a long time. That's yeah, the, the thing. Ranks. It's mm-hmm. that's where the drafting is so so critical, and I'll, I'll tell you, I get to watch Easton count a lot because he's in my Guelph Storms division. Right, mm-hmm. he, da- he did damn good player. Uh, he yeah. really, really, really good. You yeah. think, um, uh, do, you think the team will they... translate to the NHL well? Yeah, I do. and here's why I do because he is not a big guy. He's not no. a super small guy either. It's his motor. Like he he generates a lot of his points with his movement. And how he continuously chugs through. Ch- and hey, mm-hmm. he's on the top line. Like he's getting the best matchups in the OHL every night. And he put up a pile of points. 
even in that Memorial Cup finally in Saginaw, like he was all over the place. It, it's the way he generates points. It's not dangling through guys and a bunch of fancy stuff. He he works to generate mm. offense. He's and the think, motor he, on him is incredible. To think they only gave up Rasmus Sandin for him is amazing. I know. Yeah, I remember when they moved him, I thought that was a mistake, but that's uh, that's Washington's problem now. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Washington with their shiny Stanley Cup. Yeah, in color TV. Oh, I yeah, I 13. will say I I will say <laughs> color TV. I, this guy. Thirteen. Good for you. No, <laughs> no other teams were playing against you. I will. I will ask you this as well, because Albert, I I know that much like Justin Pooney when we talked to him recently, yeah. you're a big NFL guy. Mm. Justin Pooney and I and my friend Steve Savin, we all made a bunch of award prediction picks. MVP, there's a lot of discussion around it this year. I want your prediction on this. Justin Pooney <laughs> picked Dak Prescott as his Dak? MVP. Really? Yeah, you might hate mine even worse. I picked Joe Burrow. No, now, I don't hate that. Okay. Well, then, hey, there we go. That's why we're friends. That's why you're yeah. on the show. No, I like Joe Burrow, man. Who would you be laying money on? Where's the smart money coming in in terms of MVP this year? Oh, man. I mean, Lamar Jackson? To defend right. it? I, I don't think that's a bad one. For what can't he do? I just, For some reason. Shiny like I, just think, I just think it's Baltimore's year. But my, after saying after saying Lamar Jackson, I'm thinking about Derrick Henry being there now. And maybe, maybe Lamar Jackson's rushing numbers take a bit of a hit because – you know, they got King Henry back there. But I'll stick I'll stick with Lamar Jackson. You could go with Burrow. Dak Prescott is good. That's not happening. He'd have to well, that, he'd have to Dak, have that Dak would have to have an immaculate season to be an MVP. Yeah. And he had Damn a great perfect. year last year. Like let's yeah. not let's not beat around. He had a great year. He threw forty five TD like great year. I, I just don't see it happening and that offense is weaker. And and the Lamar, the other side of the of the sword here on your prediction is that if Lamar does run less, but he becomes a better passer and throws more That's touchdowns to Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews, people love their touchdowns no matter how they come if you're a quarterback. So That's I, true, I yeah. Like Mark Andrews prediction. needs to stay healthy. If Mark Andrews stays healthy, watch out for the Ravens. Yeah, they need him to stay. I like Baltimore too, man. What a yeah. team. All right, Albert. We appreciate this. Tell everybody where they can follow you and tell everybody where they can find your great new soccer content. You know, I'll be watching. Yeah. So if you want to check out some Premier League content on YouTube, just punch in my name or the real Bert V, which is my Twitter handle as well. It's that's the name I decided to choose. It's very random. I've had that that handle for a very long time. I like it. It, it reads the real the real Bert V, but also kind of looks like the real Albert TV. So that's why I decided to go with that. So you can follow me on X. Uh, at that handle and check me out on YouTube. Absolutely. Albert Vartani and our buddy. It's great to have you on here, man. We're excited to see all the content that you crank out this year. Thanks so much for going uh, on the show with us this week and uh, up the Chels, my friend. Come on. <laughs> no way. Clarky, good seeing you, buddy. Thanks a lot. Go man. You. Oh, God. <laughs> Job, uh, I got to deal with that. See Unbelievable. You later. All right. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we are going to talk about obviously uh, a really devastating bit of news out of the hockey world. We got to touch on it. And uh, we're going to talk about our couch potatoes next as well here on instigating. <laughs> Welcome back to In Skating with Clark and Jury, brought to you by Larry Hudson, Chevrolet Buick GMC. <laughs> Go visit them in Listowel. Um, yeah. Thanks to our friend Albert Vartanian for coming on. Albert's a yeah. beauty. And that guy, He's man, a beauty, talk yeah. about guys that know sports. Like the guy can yeah. just jump around. We're like, hey, what about soccer? Baseball? Better than me, this I mean, my one trick pony. Right? <laughs> no, it's good. Hey, I got to <laughs> tell you again, man, that question, it really. It really, really impressed yeah. me, your soccer yeah. question. Thanks. Knowledgeable guy, Clarky. How about that? Yeah. Premier yeah. League fan. Thanks. Thanks. All right. There's no, hey, there's no good way to transition into this. No. And it's been talked about a lot, but like, look, mm -hmm. it's our first show since obviously the the tragic news of Johnny Gaudreau and his brother, Matt, um, passing away, getting hit by an alleged drunk driver uh, in Oldman's County, New Jersey, not far away from where they grew up. And uh, Clarky, you know, I'm sure much like myself and everybody else in the hockey world, the sports world really, which has been just so affected by this. You saw the rumors floating around online late last Thursday night and then um, to have it confirmed. And as we learned more and more, 
you know, the details just got worse and worse. Um, mm -hmm. Not only mm -hmm. that, both of them lost their lives to a drunk driver riding their bicycles day before their sister's wedding, like every little detail, it just, it just makes it so much worse. And I like, I, I, I'm a baby. I'm an emotional guy. I'm having a hard time holding it together here. I, it's just the worst thing. I, I can't believe it. And, um, mm -hmm. next week on Monday, they are, uh, they are holding a, a memorial service. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be live streamed on the Columbus website and app for yeah. free. The Calgary mm -hmm. Flames are going to carry it uh, for free on their app and website as well. You'll be able to tune in on Sportsnet and watch it. Um, Clark, mm -hmm. you just, I mean, what do you say? It's just an I mean, there's not, there's, tragedy. It's such, it's such a tragedy. Um, just like the circumstances around it, um, not that it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The The only thing that really matters is um, the loss of their lives. Um, but the family just, like you never recover. You never get over it. Um, it's incredibly sad how it all went down. I mean, they're there for their sister's wedding the next day. Um, you know, just putting, it, it's impossible to put yourself in their shoes, but just to think, of the gut wrenching news that they found out, um, which was supposed to be a very, very happy, joyful day, right? Like the family gathered, the weddings the next day. And uh, I tell you, drunk driving, I, I, it's, it, it blows me away. It's such, such a tragedy. And uh, God. I, it, yeah. it, it, you know, and like seeing the outcry of people and emotion um, all around the world, um, but more particularly in, uh, you know, in Columbus uh, and in Calgary, like thousands of people showed up for a vigil there. And it's just, you know, like people who've never met him. Um, uh, and I never met Johnny, but nothing I've heard, uh, no one I've heard from has has said a bad word about this guy like just loved life and uh was just a true um mm -hmm. professional and great human being and uh it's just yeah. so so tragic it yeah really and, you, and you you basically you, you hear the same stuff about his brother matt and they were yeah. inseparable best buddies and yeah you know I, everybody i think you know at a professional level is a little more familiar with john and and his game and everything mm -hmm. that he's accomplished but Matt Matt was a professional player as well. Uh, you know, played played in the ECHLs, played in a number of different professional leagues. And, you know, people were sharing stories about him the other day about how um, you know, at training camp uh last year, you know, there were there were guys that they knew they weren't making the team and Matt made sure that they were all part of the team festivities and going out and um the golf tournament and everything. Like they just seemed like the most awesome, inclusive fun loving guys and uh they really really cared about and loved their family family was number one yeah uh, their agent lewis <laughs> yeah. gross they shared an agent he he put out a statement um today and uh shared some really cool thoughts and and stories about yeah. them and yeah it's just the worst and i think um you know, I think Gord Gord Miller of TSN said it best when he was on the airwaves on Overdrive, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. talking about it last Friday. We've seen the out the outpouring of love and support for the Goudros, and and it's it's been amazing. Um, and and Adam, I'm not going to waste any time. You know, my couch potato this week it's it, it's Johnny Goudreau and his brother Matt, and and really the entire Goudreau family. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, we're just we're just, we're thinking about him. You know, John had two little kids. Um, Matt, his his wife is pregnant. She's gonna have a she's gonna have their first child in December. It's just it's mm. awful. But as Gord real. Miller said, and and there's there's and it's gotten even bigger since this photo was taken. The the building memorial outside of the Saddle Dome, and and you see how much I mean, John Goudreau left two seasons ago. This would have been his third year in Columbus. You can see how much he still means to that community in Calgary. Um, I mean the parking lot, you can't, you can't walk on it. It's it, there's drawings all over it. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but as Gord Miller said, um, the, the best way we can honor John and Matt, I see not dr drink and drive guys. Like, yeah, I, I look, it's... I, I can't believe I have to say something. So wow. like, it, it's not a profound thought. 
um, mm-hmm. guys, God, like, just don't do this. Um, yeah. you know, and, and this stuff happens every day and, and our attention is on it right now because we've lost two very high profile and well-loved people, but man, people are losing their lives all the time because people get behind the wheel and they're not responsible, man, I, I, but we should take a break. We'll collect ourselves and we'll come back and we got to hear Clarky's couch potato too. That'll be next yep. year on Instigating. Yep. Welcome back here on Instigating with Clarky and Drury. And we're brought to you as always by our friends, Larry Hudson, Chevrolet Buick, GMC, 1000 Wallace Avenue. Go see them in Listowel. There's a lot going on over there. Look, the deals are hot. The weather's Where's getting Janice? cooler, which I like. The deals are hot. Janet, dude, my mom, really quick. I, I said before the break yeah, here. Let's go. That there was something I wanted to address that I'm really angry about. And it's not this, but, it, but I am angry about <laughs> this. My mom is getting worked into the ground. I'm not going to say where. But just it's unbelievable the weekend shifts that she's got to do. It's mm. it's gnarly enough. Like, man, just, I don't know what the culture is like over here, man. With sounds like work, she could work, really work, use work, a new work. vehicle. She could. It would you be know? nice. It'd be I mean, nice. It'd be really nice. And and, and we look, Clarky. Does she, I'm does she tell like you, EVs? Does she like EVs? Let's like never have to. My, mom, my mom's pretty old school. I just think uh, she. I think like you could know. talk her into it, um, but. You know, but you're a sale. Yeah. That's what you do. You can do that. <laughs> well, stuff, I don't. Right. I help people buy. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like I that. That's I a help people. That's buy. something. That's I what help I do. People buy. That's what I Look, do. Look, Clarky, I promise yeah. when she needs something, okay. you're going to be the guy she goes. To. Okay. Okay. I'm deal. telling you that deal. I'm telling okay. you that right now. We got some nice vehicles in Traxes, Envisions, Enclaves. Brand new enclaves, all new, redesigned, bigger and better. Um, Unbelievable, really. Um, So, yeah, lots going on down at Larry Hudson's where the deals are hot. Anyway. Red hot. And and I drive by and, like, there's a lot of stock over there, a lot of nice new stuff. The interiors of those enclaves, too. Like, it's it's Mm -hmm. a popular Mm -hmm. one, man. I can Mm -hmm. see why. And you go see our friend Clarky. If you have a rep already, that's all right. Go in. There you go. Go check out those hot deals. Exactly. Friends at Larry Hudson's Clarky. I want to, yeah. I want to let you cause, cause I, yeah. I've already unveiled my years. Yeah. Rightly. So yeah, your couch it's potato time. this week, you're excited about this. I am excited about excited. it. Excited. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's another personal uh, one. Um, okay, good. and this guy is not going to be on the couch anymore. Um, oh. because can you believe this? Like, like I'm such a young guy and I can't believe this is actually happening. But uh-huh. my, my little grandson, Riker, JK, Junior. Oh my Kin- God, he's in JK right? already. Exactly. Hey, there he is. Look at that. He's so excited about going to JK. Um, and uh, today was the day Thursday, which is another joke. Like PD day on Tuesday. Meet the teacher day on Wednesday. Today was his first day. Um, and there, there he is with go. mom. Jenna. Um, he's, he looks pretty pumped. I haven't got the report yet. I'm waiting for, he's going to FaceTime with me tonight and I'm going to find out how his first day at, at school was. Um, uh, but like this kid is in school already. There he is with there's dad, Ryan with dad, with his Fergus the legendary dad. duck. Yeah. So congratulations to Riker. He's not on the couch anymore. There's no time for a couch. He's going to school now. So, no, it's all business now. Pedal to the metal business. for Riker. For yeah. Riker, enjoy, yeah. enjoy school, yeah. buddy. That's going to be amazing. Exactly. And and this is a good opportunity to mention. You see it in the credits every week. We know everybody watches the show right to the end. That's right. And you should because producer yes. Adam puts a lot of work in it. Okay, that's right. We know you see in. We know you see in the credits. You better. And it's worth mentioning now. Jenna is the official equipment manager of this show. So she how is. about that? She and, is. And Riker is the future one. Yeah. His future equipment manager yeah. in training, yeah. right? From and let's parents. not forget that because she always gets upset. Amanda, my other daughter, is our graphic designer. The official. There's yeah. nothing unofficial about this, guys. No the graphic no. design. It's official. It's on the credits too. That's Amanda, and it's on yeah. the credits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We know you see it. We're we're not telling you anything you don't know. And your guys, buddy is okay? the music director. Well, we both are. I mean, Rob produced it all, oh, but I mean, on, and, and look, we don't hear any of the vocals on the track because we no, don't need to scare goodness. anybody, but <laughs> I, 
Player and uh-huh. stri- I am the lead singer of that band. Okay. Yeah. So, I know. New EP coming out I this know. month, ladies New and gentlemen. New EP. Extended new play. EP coming out. New EP. New music right. video that play. I'm the is star that of. Is? is that what EP is? Yes. Extended play. Yeah. Extended play. Not an LP because that's. An LP is a long play. Long play. So, what's the difference? Well, an EP is typically very short, shorter because you get a oh, single. Okay. And sometimes singles are double sided. They got a bonus track on. So it's usually sure. only two tracks max. An extended play is usually four to five, sometimes six songs. And then an LP oh, is I anything, see. I believe, eight songs or more. Oh, okay. So like Generally, LPs are 10. Yes. An LP okay. would be an album, right? Okay. A little music. Got music, it. Uh, facts got it. for you there. Got New it. EP, What's bugging you? Street, follow what's us. in okay. your What's in your kitchen? Yeah, is this a new? Yeah, this is a well, new thing we be. want to try. Yeah, yeah. What, it, what's Why in not? my kitchen? What's, yeah, what's in, in your, your kitchen? kitchen? Something's. Eating I'll tell at you your what's kitchen. in my kitchen here, dude. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really angry, and I want to set the table with this, dude, Clark. You know, look, you've worked it. This has been your career. You've worked in media for a very long time. You worked for the yes. Toronto Maple Leafs for Thanks. God's sake, which for I'm sure was me. a dream, a dream come true for you. Sure, yes, it was. I, I'm, Got I'm not to work with John anything. Ferguson Jr. Yeah, you did, Fergie, the Fergler. Absolutely. <laughs> I did. Confer- I can't confirm or deny. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I I love media too. I got into this because I, yeah. I watched Joe Bowen growing up and I watched He's the best. Uh, all Mackinac. Bob Cole and I watched yeah. RJ, Rick Jenner. I watched all my fa- and I wanted to do what they did. I wanted to call hockey games. I wanted to get into media. Yeah. I want to set the table for this here. What do you think, just as a ballpark figure, what would you reckon? If I asked you what you think the Disney company is worth, what do oh you think is Disney, Dis- is Disney worth? Yeah. I would say 800 million. It's probably way low. Million? Billion. D- Disney. Yeah, okay. Billion. You're 800 okay. billion. It, okay. So we're a little overshot. We're a little overshot. <laughs> 800 million was far too little. Too low. Yeah. And okay. 800, 800 billion. 45 billion. Yeah. They're worth one hundred and sixty-two point zero eight billion. Disney has a market cap or net worth of one hundred and sixty point zero eight billion dollars as of today. Its market cap has increased by three point zero five percent year over year. Now people are probably wondering, "Well, it's a sports show, Ryan. What are we talking about, Mickey Mouse?" Well, they own some channels, right? ABC. Well, not only does Disney own some channels. They happen to own the worldwide leader, so-called, of sports. ESPN. And at the risk of potentially hurting my hiring, you know, potential at a future company, you never know. They're not watching. I have a real problem. I have a real problem with ESPN and I guess by extension, Disney Corp. I saw today an advertisement that ESPN tweeted out and uh, X'd out. No, I'm not saying that. Screw you, mm-hmm. Elon. Tweeted. They tweeted it, yeah. and they put it on it. It's all over their social media channels. Exciting new coverage that ESPN is going to offer post-game for the National Lacrosse League, Professional Lacrosse, and the National Women's Soccer League, the NWSL, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's going to be AI-generated. Mm. Like fake the people? Computers. Yeah. A computer is going to write the articles. And so is this, this has on me- TV? No, it'll be on the ESPN app and website. I see. But the content will be generated by AI bots. Right. So it's going to be unbelievable. I can't describe to you the rage that built within me. Mm-hmm. And I know some people are probably going... Well, you know, big deal, you know? And that's a greater problem I have with society in general, and we're not going to get into that, but the lack of empathy for other people is just mind-blowing to me. Mm -hmm. No one one wants to admit something's a problem unless it's happening to them. And to anybody out there who's going, oh, what's the big deal? This guy's in media and he's complaining that a bot is going to write stories? Well... I don't know what you, the viewer or listener, does as a professional career, but let me just throw something out at you. Let, let me just let me just say, I don't know, you're a mechanic 
and you go into the garage tomorrow and your boss goes, actually, we're going to be cutting your hours, God forbid, outright firing you. We're going to cut your hours in half because we just bought this new, I don't know why it's German engineered. I just I just like here, German engineered. We bought this new German engineered super bot with, with monkey wrenches attached to it. And it's actually going to be fixing everybody's cars now. And so we don't we don't need you. That's essentially what it's like. I don't care what industry you're in. You, fast food, nope, we got a robot flipping burgers, don't need you. You know, it, it, this is so embarrassing to me. And for a company whose tagline is and always has been the worldwide leader in sports, for Disney, I don't know who's in charge of this, and I don't care. But for the corporate fat cat pigs, and there's nothing I hate more on this show, and you know that, Clarky, than corporate fat cat pigs ruining sports. For them to okay this and not take part of that, hold on, let me get the figure up here again here, 162.08 billion, billion 3.05% of which is newly generated revenue from last year. For them not to be able to take 60 grand, which like, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, it's not very much money. And we all know this. Like the middle class doesn't even exist anymore. I digress. For them to not even take that and hire someone out of college or give a job opportunity to one of the many great young men and women that we have trying to enter this workforce in this industry that is becoming a sick joke is absolutely embarrassing to me. I'm so upset about this. And I understand there's bigger problems in the world, guys. I understand it. But this, when I see something that affects potentially my livelihood and the ability of other people that want to tell stories and share all of our collective love for sports taken away by garbage like this so that Disney Corp can save 60 grand. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm sorry. I, I'm so this is in my kitchen, man. And it's the, the pan is boiling hot. Yeah. I am so upset by this, Clarky. And my I'm lights sure just went out of my kitchen. Either. If you're watching, my lights, my kitchen lights just went off too. These <laughs> lights are we need to fix your just, kitchen. Just I don't know. Brother. Just boom, went off. We got yeah. friends that can do that. But listen, yeah, I, know. I I want I want I want your thoughts on this. I'm sure they're not. Well, it's the rich getting richer. It happens all the time. That's what it's all about. And it's, it's not about at all in any stretch of the fact about the end user, because the end user is going to be the one that suffers. And it happened. It happened in, in the business I was in at Leafs TV, Leafs TV, like them or hate them provided the Leaf fan with unprecedented coverage, pregame shows, postgame shows, practice shows, um, alumni shows. Like, it was great if you were a diehard. It was all Leafs all time. I watched right. it. And it was awesome. We went from a two-hour postgame show to a one-hour postgame show to a let's just record a postgame show and, and replay it in the morning and just play it in the morning, not even replay it. Let's not do a live postgame show. Who wants to watch that? Well, I'm telling you right now, there's 31 teams in the NHL that do a live half-hour post-game show on their TV channel. Guess which one doesn't? The Toronto Maple Leafs. The one worth the most money. The one worth the most money. And you know why? Because Bell and Rogers don't want the competition. So they shut down Leafs TV. Gone. See you later. Yeah, competition, what a bad thing, you know? And, and it's just, and, and, yeah. And, that, and yep. on that note, Clarky, something else I'm angry about that I'm angry yeah. about every year. Uh-huh. On that note, the, the competition thing. And, and, and guys, I'm going to keep this to sports. Don't worry here. When you talk about competition and how it affects sports fans in particular, a great example is uh, the brand new lineup of games that we're getting rolled out here. Madden NFL is out. It is an absolutely atrocious product. It's horrifically <laughs> bad, guys. That you'll buy. Uh, no, I haven't bought a copy okay. of Madden okay. football. Well, but you've said that about NHL and keep buying it. I haven't bought NHL in five years. Well, which one do you play? 
I have I don't play it anymore. I, I have so the fun. games. Yeah, I have the games through 19 through 24. I'm not going to tell you who gave me the code to get oh, those games oh, for free. Okay. But I got them for free and thank oh. bloody God okay, above okay. us. Okay. That I did or else I wouldn't have played them and known that they remain crap. Right. But it's because EA has exclusive rights to develop. Of course. Exclusive rights to yeah. develop simulation football and hockey games. Yeah. Now. No, I get it. This could be changing. Because this year, the yes. NFL announced that they were going to not renew oh. that exclusive agreement that EA signed oh. back in 2004, hmm. which means we could get the return of the tremendous, and many would say at the time, better NFL 2K series, mm -hmm. the Sega series. Please. And someone, God. Please take over the hockey game. And, and you're EA right. Sports it's, it's, today, it's, it's, new it's NHL all about, it's and all uh, about competition. And these places don't there want is the none. competition. And that's what drives things down because competition is a the healthy quality thing. Of the product the are better, garbage. the more competition you have, the better the product. Here's plain here's, and simple. Here's how I can put it very plainly for people, because there are a lot of people that like the games. And if you like the games, I, I'm not going to I'm not here to tell you not to like them. You Fine. talk for a second. But what they are, though, life back on. absolutely fix your kitchen. Listen, what this is, is. Very simple terms. The games have become all about being the online gambling. Let's just call it what it is. Buying the dumb card packs on Ultimate Team. That's all they want you there for. You pay, in Canada here, you pay $90 to get the new version of the game every year. There's nothing I new. Know. No, except, nothing the, new. except the rosters. They don't improve the gameplay. It's except crap. the rosters. It's, the you're rosters paying that, half the time. That's half the time all the rosters aren't even for. accurate. It's a joke. Half the time the rosters aren't even accurate. It's a joke. And, and it's all about this online pachinko yeah. machine where you buy these cards and... Pray to God you get a Christian McCaffrey or Sidney Crosby. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a joke. It what is. this is basically that sports gamers and fans deal with is imagine there was a bakery in your town and you mm -hmm. like bag. I hey, call I love a bagel. Oh, yeah. Sure There's why. one bakery in town and the bakery and the bakery's really bad. Let's mm -hmm. just say, but you have no other choice. Right. The you got to have that bagel. In town That's is the, only the bad one bakery. Get. Right. But then down the street, a new bakery opens up and it's mm -hmm. way better. And it's guess even what cheaper, happens. actually. And then you discover that the owner of the first bakery goes, oh, I don't like that. And they just buy out the other bakery and turn mm -hmm. it into a secondary crappy location. That's what this is. We just get the same stale bagel. And I want a different one. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. tired of it, dude. Get rid it's of the bagels gross. and the, and the AI I'm anti AI everything. Well, I'm, it's dangerous. I'm, it's, I might it's be... a dangerous place we're in, in the world. That's for sure. You know what, Clarky? Honestly, I saw the article about the ESPN thing, writing articles with, with AI. Did a robot my... write the article about the AI? No. And okay. I, what, what I, my immediate thought was just send the terminators already. Like just get this over with. Have Arnold Schwarzenegger kick my door in in his leather jacket and tell me he needs my clothes, boots, and motorcycle and just end it for us. Yeah. If that's what we're doing mm -hmm. and we're going to give sports, what's beautiful about sports, Clarky? Sp entertainment in general, sports, music, it's that it makes us feel things. It bring what's the corny crap you hear every year? It brings people together, man. It's uh, it unites us. And we're going to let robots do it? I'm over it, dude. Send the Terminators. I'm over it. This is a joke. Uh, yeah, I'm it over is. It. Yep. Very I'm good. Over it, dude. Well, but you're not over this show, and that's why we bring it to you every well, week. We're very be. happy to do that. I think it that. should be over. It's time. Brought to you by our friends by Larry Hudson, Chevrolet Buick GMC. Remember, you can watch this show Friday nights at 8, Sunday nights at 9, our friends on Whiteman TV. That's channel 6, by the way, for Whiteman subscribers. We debut on our YouTube channel. You can watch us there Friday nights at 9. Follow us on social media at Instigating Pod. Find the podcast version on all your favorite podcast apps. That's it for us this week. And uh, just one hey, last time. One yes. Last thing. Congratulations. Yes. What? You, won, you won the golf pool.
Congrats. I did. Yeah. Scotty. Sch- I don't even want to claim that as a title. Yes. I picked <laughs> Scotty Scheffler and he won the FedEx. Congrats, yeah. Scotty Scheffler. 62 million in earnings. Crazy. This year. I read his caddy That's made 6 million this year, which is more than, million which is more than Jack made in his entire career. God, crazy. The money. The crazy. money. Yep. The anyway, money. Jack's doing okay. One last, one last thing. One yeah. more time. Rest uh-huh. in peace, Johnny and Mackie yeah. God love the Goodrows.